And it really started the term Halloween as a Christian term to refer to the beginning of the 24-hour celebration of what's called All Saints Day, or the one day in the year when Christians all over the world would gather together to remember and thank God for the testimonies, the lives of the saints, those people who had gone before us and had been exemplary um, uh, paragons of virtue and faithfulness. Many of them were martyrs and died for their faith. And we picked that time just as a special time to commemorate those people. The holidays in the historic Christian church were celebrated just like the Jewish ones, where time is counted, counted from sundown to sundown rather than our culture from sunrise to sunrise. So the holiday begins with the sundown. That's the evening of the holy day or the Halloween the holy evening, and then continues through the next day until the next sundown. All Saints Day is what we would refer to as November 1st. But originally what happened was during the time, you know, some approaching the time of the winter solstice, approaching the time when the sun was out for the least amount of time during the day, when the weather was the coldest, when uh, the vegetation was growing the least, when the animals weren't giving birth, that time of death and decay and ending was a time that the pagan cultures around the world who had forgotten that all life comes from God and that he is eternal, that he never dies and comes back again, um, they used that to commemorate this ending, this death thing. And they began to celebrate all kinds of ceremonies having to do with being afraid of death, with placating what they believed were evil spirits, with um, providing for their loved ones who had died so that they could somehow placate the gods uh, of the other world um, into having a good afterlife. And it was into that scene that Christianity came. Of course, we know with the Roman Empire that Christianity came as early as the end of the first century to the British Isles. But it didn't really have a strong foothold in northern Europe in the United Kingdom until almost the 500s. And around that time period, we have the time of St. Patrick, who Christianized Ireland. Um, you have um, you know, a lot of the other um, saints or, or early leaders of the church who brought the gospel to northern Europe in the United Kingdom. And because All Saints Day was separated, celebrated at different times during different parts of the year throughout the Christian church, these evangelists saw an opportunity to band together and choose one day that would be in stark contrast to the pagan celebrations they saw around them and to use that day to celebrate All Saints Day. In fact, the whole idea of wearing scary monster masks and uh, imitating demons started as people, because uh, the pagan people, some of them believed that demons would bother them if they didn't properly placate them by living, leaving out treats and other things of value for them and some, in some way placating the demons and the gods. And so if you wore a demon mask, you could fool the demons. They wouldn't know that you weren't one of them and you wouldn't be subject to their attacks. But this is all pagan false philosophy. This is all false belief. This is something that the church didn't come in and be afraid of or run from or warn people of as though there is any power opposed to God in actual reality. But instead, they saw it as an opportunity to bring liberty and freedom and peace to people who were oppressed by their own fears and their own ignorance. But it's not pagan in the sense that it's almost entirely secular. Most of the people who celebrate it have no religious conviction at all, or they have just some sort of a vague, amorphous, yeah, I kind of believe in God, I guess I'm an American kind of thing. Um, it is the second largest commercial holiday in the United States. It makes more money for mm. retailers than any other holiday except for Christmas. Um, and, of course, you have a whole month to build up to Christmas, and it seems like now people are spending a whole month to, you know, to build up to Halloween. The candy sales um, are, uh, for Halloween are almost the same as they are for Easter now, and yet Easter was traditionally the candy holiday. Hmm. And uh, it, I think it already has passed that for Christmas. But these are all pagan things. Um, someone who dresses up on Halloween and goes to a costume party and eats candy corn is no more likely to be a devotee of Satan or of witchcraft or of anything like that than someone who gets up on Christmas morning and opens Christmas presents um, and uh, maybe even darkens the door of a church for once a year is a Christian just because they're celebrating Christmas. As a matter of fact, both, most people celebrate both holidays because it's a time to get together, to have fun, and to celebrate some things that are kind of in the vestiges of their cultural memory as a human experience, and yet they really have no understanding of the value or the purpose behind certainly the Christian holidays of All Saints Day or the celebration of Christ's birth, or even the pagan or polytheistic, the folk religion, the non-Christian religions that preceded Christianity in Northern Europe and the United Kingdom. 
Well, witches and Satanists have very, very different worldviews. And, and just because we don't agree with them as Christians doesn't mean that we can lump them all together as though they were the same thing. They're not any more the same thing than to say that a Muslim and a Christian believe the same thing. In fact, they believe very different things. And at least the Muslim believes in one God and the Christian believes in one God. But with witches and Satanists, they don't even have that kind of thing in common. In fact, most, witch, most witches, if they have any set belief in the idea of a supernatural being or beings, believe in more than one god or goddess. They believe in spiritual powers, if they believe that the supernatural actually exists. And they are more involved in environmentalism, in seeing the innate unity of all reality. They're kind of pantheistic in the sense that everything is of the same substance, everything has the same spiritual value. The, the Gaia movement is another reference to what commonly is termed by, by Christians as, as witchcraft. It's an idea that all of existence is holy, all of existence has the same spiritual value, and that our goal as humans is to be in harmony and be in tune with the whole, with the entire, with the whole organism of existence. And uh, they are not violent. They don't sacrifice living things. Many of them won't even sacrifice plants. Many of them are vegetarians. Most of them are involved in practices that either they have borrowed and adopted from pre-Christian or non-Christian polytheistic religions, or sometimes they've even invented their own systems. That's what most witches are involved in. Do they practice spells, whatever you mean by the term spell? They do. They practice things that they believe help them to become in spiritual mental, emotional, and physical harmony with the world around them. Uh, for any witch to say something like, uh, you know, to, to want to be destructive towards someone or to practice, quote-unquote, black magic, is really kind of against the whole system of contemporary witchcraft that we see today. Now, the Old Testament, when it uses the term witchcraft, as translated, especially by the King James Bible from, you know, the 1600s and, and also by other translations, refers to practices, not to worldviews. When those terms are ascribed in the Old Testament, they're ascribed to people who are living in the Jewish culture with the Jewish worldview, which is not the contemporary witchcraft worldview. In the Jewish worldview, there is only one God, and any spiritual force or entity set up against that one God is by definition excluded and outlawed. And so witches who participated in practices that had been outlawed by God or that were related to the worship and service of idols were considered enemies of God, not because they were like what we have today in contemporary witchcraft, but because they were doing practices within the context of a monotheistic worldview that they knew were treasonous, spiritually treasonous actions. Satanists, on the other hand, there are a number of different kinds of Satanists, and one of the things, because it's, it's a, a religion that appeals to the self-indulgent, uh, they tend to be as varied as there are practitioners, everybody can do his own thing. Most Satanists don't believe that spiritual reality exists. Most of them don't believe that God exists, much less that a spiritual entity named Satan exists. But they hate Christianity, and they set themselves up as their own gods, as their own determiners of their own fate. They put their own needs, their own wants, their own desires first, and everybody else can be expendable in that realm. Some Satanists do believe that spiritual power exists. Some of them believe that there's just kind of power out there, kind of like the force of gravity or the, you know, um, something like that, some natural force, but it's, it's a non-physical force and that they can tap into it and use it for their own goals. And while they probably wouldn't want to describe themselves as destructive or evil, because their ethical system is, if it benefits me, it's good, if it doesn't benefit me, it's bad, they could very well imagine hurting someone or exploiting someone or manipulating things against someone else for their own benefit. I'm not saying that all Satanists do that. I'm just saying that their worldview allows for that. I just wanted to say a special thanks to Gretchen. I am a modern-day witch. I follow the Wicca religion. And I just wanted to thank you for setting the record straight. There is a definite difference between witches and Satanism. And unfortunately, you know, many people don't know that. But we are not evil people. And uh, it is unethical to cast spells to bring harm against others. So I just wanted to share that with you, Hank. I do listen to your show. And I think although we have different religious paths, that we can all do great things together. 
Well, so, so I just wanted to thank you for your show and uh, for informing people about Halloween. Uh, Sage, thank you so much for your comments. And, uh, you know, I really think that the Bible tells us that we should practice the golden rule, which is to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. I wouldn't want to be misrepresented. I wouldn't want to be mistreated. I wouldn't want to have untruths told about me. And so I try not to do that about other people, too. And also there's, there's something that um, my late husband called the platinum rule, kind of goes beyond the golden rule. The Apostle Paul talks about it in the letter to the Philippians in the beginning of the chapter where he says, not only should you think of others as you would have them think of you, but also that you should think of others better than yourself. And he says, in fact, to the, to the struggling church in Philippi, if each one of you treated each other better than you treat yourselves, Nobody would have any complaints or arguments or disagreements. And I think that that is a good principle for us to follow, uh, whether we believe in the God of the Bible, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, or whether we don't, you can still, I'll give you my permission to borrow that principle from us. And I would also suggest, too, that I am always learning, always growing in my knowledge, and always eager to talk to other people. And if you'd like to correspond with me, just go to my website. It's Answers in Action. You can find it really easily, just answers.org. And email me, and I'd be happy to talk with you. Um, I really do believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the true answer to all people for all time, not an exclusivistic um, boasting or bigotry way, but in the sense that it really has made a difference in my life. I believe that it has made a difference in the lives of millions of people over time, and I believe that there is enough evidence and uh, enough good reason to believe that it truly is the satisfaction that everybody is searching for in his or her own way. So thank you very much for your call and for your, your comments um, about witchcraft, and I'm glad that I didn't misrepresent you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, and, you know, I think we all have the same goal, just a, a different way of getting there. Um, I will share with you, since you talked about the golden rule, the Wiccan read is to do what thou will and bring harm to none. Right. So I think the idea is very much the same, and I appreciate your offer to correspond, and I will definitely take you up on that. I think we could learn a lot from each other, and Hank, thanks so much for your show. Okay, but before you go, i got to ask you a question. Okay. As a witch, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? You know, that is a really good question. I was raised Southern Baptist, and, you know, witches believe in many gods and goddesses, and I consider Jesus Christ a god that I do worship at times. But there are also other gods that I worship at times, too. Okay, and... So uh, one of many. Okay, and, and I'm going to have Gretchen uh, respond to that just for the benefit of everybody else, including yourself. Sure. Again, Sage, thank you so much for your call. Thanks, Hank. I appreciate it. <laughs> have a good night. Okay. Uh, okay. Gr Gretchen, what about that? Well, Is it a palatable notion to suggest that Jesus Christ is one of many gods, or do we have to take the position that he is the truth, he is the life, no one comes to the Father but by him, because he's the only way to God. Well, you know, um, I respect her right to believe whatever she wants to believe. God gives us that choice, that ability. But I also believe that there really is only one way that is true. It may be the way of all ways, as Sage is saying, or it may be the way of one way of Jesus Christ as the Bible says, and as Christianity has taught for more than 2,000 years. The question is, how can we know? What is it? Is it the many ways of sage? Is it the one way of the Bible? Or is it some other alternative that we don't even know about? Actually, we can go through and we can look at the evidence that we have, the evidence from history, the evidence from the world around us, the evidence from revelation, the evidence from the knowledge of God in our own hearts, the evidence from our mental processes and thinking through all the different alternatives. But in every endeavor of study and experience, both knowing and existing or experiencing, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the way exemplified in the Bible where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That is the way that wins out in the realm of science, in the realm of theology, in the realm of philosophy, in the realm of religion, in the real realm of ethics, in the realm of art, in the realm of history, in every single realm of study, in every single realm of experience. It is the Jesus of the Bible who is shown to be the one who is trustworthy and the only one who can save us.